Good afternoon. I'm Monica Teresi with the RV Industry Association, and I would like to welcome you to today's webinar on how to get the most out of your membership. We are joined by Bill Baker, RV Industry Association's Vice President of Membership and Research, who will walk us through everything you need to know about, how, about your member benefits, your resources, and the data. We have set time at the end for a Q&A, but feel free to use the questions box, the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen to ask questions as we go. And with that, I'll turn it over to Bill to get us started. Thanks, Monica, and thanks everybody for joining us. Uh, you know, I travel to a lot of member events, uh, facilities, you know, run into members at uh, industry events. And you know, this is one of the questions I get asked a lot. Uh, we did this once last year, I believe, and it was really successful. So I thought we would re-up and do it again, especially as we're uh, coming towards the end of the renewal process, which is going great. Thank you guys for renewing. We really appreciate your support and, uh, and, and, and participation in the association. You know, it's you guys that make us as strong as we are. Uh, starting off, I just wanted to go through sort of a, an RV Industry Association 101, just go over the core programs, what we try to do from a very high level that your investment and, and support help finance and make possible. It's at the heart of what makes the industry what it is and, and the growth that we've seen over the last, you know, couple of decades, uh, obviously. So let's go ahead to the next slide, Monica. So, you know, no surprise, the, you know, the Hire Association is the leading trade voice for the RV industry, which is a $114 billion industry. We represent approximately 450 manufacturers, uh, some component and aftermarket suppliers, we together produce 98% of all RVs made in the U.S. and about 60% worldwide. In addition to those OEMs and suppliers, we also have finance firms, uh, associate members that are consultants, things of that nature. Here it is right here with a breakdown by supplier type or membership type um, and manufacturer's reps. So all total, that's about 450 members. Uh, and that's actually grown uh, 2021 over 2020. So seeing some really solid growth in the membership area. So we're, we're proud of that. This is what we try to do. What we, you know, our mission is to promote and protect our industry and our members. And, you know, we, our vision is to be the proactive leader and helping to grow and expand the RV market, keep it healthy. And this is the promise we make to members that we will grow and expand the market, that we pursue a favorable business environment for our members. We want to cultivate a good experience for consumers. We want to be the leader in providing industry data and knowledge. Uh, we want to help our members and, and uh, OEMs and suppliers foster the continuous improvement of products and just overall promote the health and well-being of the association. And this is the foundation of what we do. You know, these are sort of the cornerstones of, of, of the association. Obviously, in the middle there is the, the granddaddy of them all, the RV2 Industry Association. Um, you know, we focus on, you know, core programs are the self-regulation of the industry, our industry standards and inspection process, the government relations we do. Um, events that we hold and market insights. Um, on the left there is Go RV, which has been around since the late 90s. Uh, that's the partnership we have with RVDA, and that's uh, our consumer facing uh, organization that works to attract new consumers to RV. It, it provides, it helps fund our efforts at RVIA to do consumer research and insight, and it also uh, leads the PR effort that Monica and Jeremy and her team work in conjunction with the Go RV team to do that. And then the new kid on the block is the RV Technical Institute. And that was, um, again, a program that we partnered with the dealers on uh, that was put into place a couple of years ago. Kurt Hemmler and his staff there do a great job. Uh, what they're focusing on now is repair event cycle times. We're trying to shorten the time that it takes for consumers on the road using their RVs, shorten that time it takes for the most, uh, most common uh, problems that RVers have. Uh, one of the things they're really focusing on now is technician recruitment. Obviously, with the growth we're seeing in the RV industry and RV usage, we need more technicians. We need more trained technicians. So uh, one part of that effort is to recruit new technicians into the industry. And then once they're in there, to provide them with the training and certification they need to help improve customer satisfaction with the service and repair cycle for um, RVers. So, you know, we'll get into some of the core programs here. Uh, obviously, the, the big thing, you know, the, what, the, what is most valued, but especially by our OEM members, but also supplier members, is the self-regulation and the standards. Um, we, as an industry, 
uh, are the stewards of uh, about eight industry standards regulating traditional and park model RVs. Um, you know, the government is really involved in that. It's a, it's a, it's a self-regulated industry. And to help, um, to help with that, we have a team of full-time inspectors who promote the enhancement of um, the, the, the adherence to the standards. They visit um, our member companies about, about eight, every eight weeks, culminating about 2,000 plant inspections annually. And this year, uh, starting with the COVID back in 2020, they also hosted some seminars on achieving compliance with federal max vaccine mandates and workplace safety. So uh, a little uh, enhancement to just the traditional standards and inspection process. Uh, close second in, in terms of what members value is government affairs. Uh, we advocate at the federal, federal, state, and international level to create that favorable business environment. We want to protect against onerous legislation and regulations. I mean, it really comes down to we want to make it easier for consumers to buy, drive, and own an RV. Um, you know, we've had two really big uh, victories at the federal level over the last year or so, uh, securing a significant investment in the Great American Outdoors Act and also the bipartisan infrastructure bill. Obviously, uh, RVers, public lands are a really popular uh, destination for those folks. The Great American Outdoors Act is going to help address backlogs and maintenance. It's going to fund uh, roadways into the campgrounds. It's going to help improve those campgrounds. And then the bipartisan infrastructure bill is going to help with the roads and engineering projects that are needed to make sure that the RVers can safely get to their favorite destinations. Um, in the state, one of our big state victories this year was we removed RVs from Louisiana's redhibition statutes and enacted uh, more appropriate lemon law provisions, resulting in a more positive experience for the consumer in the industry. Um, that was really a, uh, a tough uh, statute legislation there, and we were lucky to get that change. It was a big victory for the industry. And then in California, we worked with the California Air Resource Board. They wanted to limit the number of days an out-of-state diesel motorhome could be in the state, and we worked um, to, to, to change that so they could visit, you know, they rent to leave after three days. So we changed that. Obviously, California is a huge destination, very popular for RVers, both in terms of a destination and in, in terms of selling RVs. Uh, research and market data. This is something we've really focused on in the past couple of years is boosting the, the amount of research we do and making it available to members. Uh, we, we look at both market data uh, for the RV industry as well as consumer trends and insights. Uh, some of the studies that, you know, we've completed over the past couple of years is the groundbreaking go RV owner demographic profile. Um, we did a, a study on new buyers in 2020. Um, we have the RVs Move America study that looks at what the total economic impact of the tire industry is. We've done some breakout um, research projects that look at specifically at the RV aftermarkets parts, parts and accessories. Uh, with our PR team, we do a travel intention survey twice a year that look at you know, how much RVers are gonna travel, what those travel preferences are. That's very helpful in our media relations outreach. Uh, we just completed a member, membership segmentation and satisfaction study that shows that you, know, you guys are very happy with the job we're doing, really strong um, rates on the value, uh, responses on the value that they get from the association and, and plans to stay as members. Uh, we do a vacation cost comparison study. That's one of the big reasons people choose to RV is the amount of money they save versus other vacation options. So the Latin, that was last done in 2018. So we'll be updating that. And then we've also done some, uh, again, some one-off research projects that look at RV service and how consumers feel about that experience. Here's what's coming up in 2022. These are things that are gonna be available to you as members. Uh, you know, these are things that, you know, some, some projects, some research uh, studies we do, we, we put out for uh, more industry consumption, but a lot of these we make members only, or, or as a member, you get more insight. Uh, one of the things that will be coming out here in the next month or so is we did a comprehensive study of the campground inventory, the campground ecosystem. Uh, we wanted to know, believe it or not, there's really no central repository for this. You know, we wanted to know exactly how many RV, how many campgrounds there were, both public and privately. So this, this, this aggregates it all to tell us how many RV camp, how many campgrounds there are, both at the, on the private side, as well as the federal, state, and municipal local level. Uh, in, in, in addition to how many campgrounds there are, it's how many 
specific campsites, how they're broken up be between tent and RV. What is the, um, what, you know, what, how, what are the RV capabilities that those campgrounds have? You know, it's very high level stuff, but it's going to be really important in our advocacy efforts at the federal and state level to uh, encourage those entities to expand and build new campgrounds, as well as for the private side that they can use it to go out to get money from lenders and analysts and investment firms to, to boost the number of campgrounds that are available given that you know we're upwards of 600,000 units being shipped now annually. Um, another really uh, important study will be rolled out in June. It's the Arby's Move America Economic Impact Study. Again, that looks at the total economic impact of the entire industry from the OEM level down all the way through the dealership experience, sales and service, the campgrounds, aftermarket, you know, every segment of the industry feeds into that. Uh, and we use that. That's a really important tool that our government affairs folks use. And um, those results are available at a national level, at a state level, and at a congressional district level. We're updating that 2020 new buyer study that we did last year at about this time. Um, it's going to look at new buyers that bought in 2020 and 2021. It's going to get an aggregate view of those new buyers in total but it will also have a breakout between the differences between those who bought in 2020 and those who bought in 2021. Uh, and I've seen the preliminary cut of that data and there are some pretty significant differences between those two sets of buyers. I think that, you know, no, no big shocker to anyone, no big breaking any big news here, but a lot of those buyers are, are younger. They're Gen X and millennials. And, you know, they have different perceptions, different expectations, different usage patterns, but, you know, that's a really good, uh, research that'll help inform your business decisions. Obviously, you know, the workhorse of what we do is we generate those monthly RV and park model RV shipment reports to give you an idea of where the, where the industry is in terms of wholesale shipments. Um, we also do our quarterly RV roadside shipments forecast. We'll be doing a new one here once the December numbers are available in another week or so. So we'll have that out probably uh, early March. That'll give the look at where we should end up 2022. Our last forecast was for just over 600,000 units. I think at this point, we don't really see that changing too much. And then we also do um, the industry profile. That's a, a wrap up of the year for 2021 and also offers a 10 year look back at, at shipments for motorhomes, towable RVs and you know, where, they get, where they're built, where they're sent. You, know, it, you can break it down by uh, length. So uh, just a really valuable 10-year repository of data that's available to you guys. Uh, industry PR. So, um, you know, this is obviously in addition to GoRV, with, which, you know, uh, purchases uh, exposure for the industry. You know, our PR effort works to gain earned media, you know, and it, we're the voice of the industry, ensuring a cohesive and positive message across the media landscape. We've gone through one of our best and longest uh, positive press runs I think the industry's seen. I've, they reminded me yesterday, I've been here for 30 years in February. So uh, I can attest that you know, what we've seen over the past two years is incredible. Uh, we've been featured on the Today Show, Fox Business, Bloomberg, the Associated Press, Yahoo, New York Times, USA Today, US News and World Report, Yahoo Finance and, and MSN. So more than 5,000 media mentions in 2021, 2021. So that really helps, um, you know, that earned media really helps uh, support what we're also doing at GoRV. So GoRV, like I said, it's the consumer facing arm of the industry. Um, you know, it's charged with attracting new consumers and, you know, they help uh, fund the research that we do on those consumers, um, you know, Given how popular the industry has been over the past two years, um, you know, we sort of uh, pumped the brakes on, on appealing, on advertising to get new buyers, and we've changed the focus a little bit to develop inspirational content to, and videos to help assist those new RV owners. A lot of these times, you know, a lot of the folks that are coming in never really had RVing on their radar. They get these units, they don't know how to use them, so um, need, they need some assistance. So GoRVing has done a great job of making these very informative and, and entertaining and educational videos to help those new owners as they you know, gain experience. And they continue to reach diverse consumer prospects with uh, authentic content. What they've done is they have these influencers, they're real RVers, and they leverage those guys so that RV, you know, our, our, our audiences are looking at those folks and they recognize them that they're, they're RVers too, 
and are very helpful in those efforts. So benefits remember, you know, this is one of the things that, you know, um, gets overlooked sometimes is as an RBI member, you know, you're a partner in GoRB and you have access to a lot of great uh, resources and tools. Uh, obviously, there's the, the studies that we do, um, the RB owner demographic profile, which was unveiled last year, you know, it's full of chock full of information. If you haven't gotten a copy, log on, get that. We're happy to answer any questions. We can put you in touch with Ipsos that did the research if you want. Uh, if you have specific questions or looking for specific data. Um, GoRVing publishes a monthly marketing minute that looks at consumer trends that could impact the future RVs. That can be helpful to your marketing team, to your sales team, you know, sort of what's coming down the pike in terms of um, you know, consumer trends and cultural trends that are gonna, that are, that are gonna affect RV. Um, 96,000 consumers search by brand on GoRVing.com, which drives them directly to the member site in one click. So, you know, for the OEMs that, um, you know, are on the site, consumers can reach your website very easily through GoRV. And then you can download dealer leads and searches, which are up over almost nearly 1,500% uh, and 87% um, respectively. So you can download those leads. And the other thing that's not on here is you, there's also an industry-only section where you can use GoRV uh, collateral in terms of pictures and video that you can use in your own marketing efforts you know, for your own usage. Looking ahead to 2022, these are some of the major initiatives for GoRV. Uh, again, we're gonna focus on, on two primary opportunities to recruit and retrain, retain new RV owners. Um, they're gonna refresh the successful 2020 campaign with new versions of the broadcast digital and radio ads. Uh, they're looking to refresh the brand persona to ensure that we it continues to resonate and increase brand recognition for new target audiences. And we're going to continue to reach out to diverse audiences of prospective owners and customers that with authentic content that reflects of who they are and resonates to what with what they like to do with what they find important in their lifestyle. Uh, turning to the RV Technical Institute, again, that the mission there is to improve the RV consumer experience and grow the pool of trained service technicians. Um, the foundation has been built over the last year or so with RV technician career paths and the industry approved training curriculum and delivery methods that allow tech, they, so techs can be trained at RBTA headquarters, at dealerships or online. So, you know, the delivery of that content is wide open, a lot of options there. And also, really focusing on recruitment this year with an expanded marketing campaign that's looking to bring over a thousand new techs into the industry. So now we're getting, you know, that's probably a little bit longer than we needed to go, but I think that, you know, I just think that's really important to look at, you know, what we do at a very high level through a lot of different programs to help position the RV industry and your companies for success, to create that environment where you're going to be successful. But, you know, if you drill down to say, okay, what can I do to even maximize that further, to make that even more personal? I think that, you know, or like I said, over 30 years, the thing that I've noticed with members that feel they're accessible, feel connected to the association, feel they're getting good value, is they're engaged. So, you know, I think that's my biggest um, suggestion is to be engaged. And that takes on a lot of different forms. You know, one is just the simple set up your MyRBIA account if you haven't already. Um, you know, that gives you access to the website. You're going to get the email newsletters. You're going to get the communications that lets you know all the stuff we're doing. Uh, urge your colleague, colleagues and coworkers to do the same. This isn't an individual membership association. It's a company association. So, you know, when your company joins, that gives all those employees that you have and even, you know, your vendors, if you have uh, an advertising agency or you know, something like that, you know, you can leverage that company membership to help those individuals. So, you know, sometimes we have our official rep is someone that works in the accounting department and, you know, they're, you know, they're just, they get the email to renew their membership. You know, what we're saying is make sure that your marketing team gets it. Make sure that your sales team, engineering, you know, throughout the organization so that they're aware of what we're doing and they can use our resources and tools to help them be successful. Uh, also, when you sign up for my RBA, RBIA, you're able to manage your account businesses online and again, it gives you just access to the really great content on rbie.org. And yeah, this, this is sort of what, um, this is just a quick 
look at what, what's available on the website. Obviously, it's, it's the portal that gets you to the shipment data and forecast, to the research. Um, there's government affairs that talks about policy positions. There's standards areas that talks about standards. There's information about events. And also, there's the, it's the repository where we aggregate all the uh, articles that you see on the news and insights forms. Um, you know, our main, in addition to the website, you know, we communicate with our members through email a lot, um, primarily. Uh, twice a week, we send out the news and insights newsletter that provides uh, updates on association programs, provides updates on industry, and highlights those earned media PR placements we just talked about a second ago. Uh, it gets sent out every Tuesday and Thursday. I think it goes out at 9 a.m. Eastern. Uh, and again, just make sure your company staffs are in there so that, you know, everybody in your organization is being aware of what the industry is doing and, and, and up to date on those efforts. Uh, in addition, we also send out legislative alerts. We also send out uh, standards alerts and special member updates as needed. We urge you to follow us on our social media channels, Facebook, uh, Instagram, inside, uh, LinkedIn, and uh, Instagram and Twitter. So, you know, do a great job of uh, posting what we're doing on there, linking to articles, uh, it's really a good way to also keep up with what the association is doing. Um, it's your logo too. So we, you know, you're a member, we'd like you to advertise that, you know. Um, so we do have this logo that's available for use in your, on your websites and your newsletters and your, in your promotional materials. Just give me a call or Monica or Jeremy. We're happy to get you the, the, the logo and, and, the, and the files you're needed to use that. But I uh, really encourage you to, to use that and leverage that, that tool that we have. You know, this ties back into the engagement, um, ways that you can get involved. Um, we, we encourage folks to volunteer for the RV Industry Association committees that we have. I think we have about 14 or 15 standing committees that sort of feed into those uh, program areas we talked about. Uh, those are available on the website. If you want to look at that and see what interests you, um, just reach out to me or another staff person and, and we'll look to get you on that committee. Uh, you know, this year we're looking forward to bringing back some of our events. Arby's Move America Week will take place June 5 through 9 in DC. Um, that's where a lot of those committees meet, make the plan for the, make their plans for the upcoming year. It's also our advocacy day where we, you know, we, we, um, travel up to Capitol Hill, meet with legislators, how fingers crossed that we'll be able to do that this year. Uh, and, you know, that event, I think that for first timers, when they come to that, it's a really eye-opening event in a number of ways. Uh, they enjoy Advocacy Day. They, you know, they, they like meeting with the legislators and doing that. But I think it's, it's a really good way to look at, see all that RBIA does. And I, I've heard many times first timers say, I had no idea this really opened up my eyes. In addition, it's a great networking event, very high level members there from um, executive level members there from companies. And, you know, it's just a great way to meet folks within the industry to network and build those connections. If you're um, active in the aftermarket, our RV aftermarket conference will be held October 8th through 11th in San Antonio. Uh, that's another wonderful event. And we, we were able to get back on track with that in Atlanta last year. And I tell you, it was really nice to to get back out to an event. And uh, we're looking forward to having a really successful event again this year. And then, you know, participate in these webinars and the virtual seminars that we have on a number of different, top, different topics throughout the year. Uh, and again, you know, encourage, you know, folks throughout your organization to do that. You know, the, you know, the more you get involved, I think the more you, you learn about what RVIA is, what it offers, how you can leverage that, and to make those connections where you can really get the most out of it. Um, again, sort of a recap, sign up for email communications. We want you to get on the website, rbi.org, find out what's there and reach out to association staff. You know, one of the things, so we have about 45, 50 employees, um, you know, and they're, they're experts in their field, you know, whether it be standards, government affairs, uh, marketing with the GORV staff, research. Uh, we just have a wide range of expertise that can augment what you're doing in your, your company. And, you know, we'd like to think we have a concierge level, uh, uh, concierge level of support for you. So 
I can get, you know, I promise you, if you give me a call, I might not know the answer, but I know how to get you an answer. I know how to put you in touch with somebody that's going to help you. Um, you know, just in my area with the data, if you have questions about the Gorevine demographic profile, I can put you in touch with the team that did that research. If you have questions about ITR and their forecast, Eric Post at ITR, who does the quarterly uh, webinars over, you know, that review the, the forecast, he's happy to spend some time on the phone with you or answer an email with questions. Uh, you know, maybe you're, maybe you need some help taking what that, you know, what our forecast says, maybe you need some help in and developing your own rate of change for your business model. Matt Hummel on our staff is a research analyst. He's help, happy to help you to provide guidance with that. So I think that, you know, just send an email, pick up the phone. You know, we're, we're there. To, I can tell you that everyone on the staff is eager to help you and, and, and get, get to where you need to be in terms of realizing um, great value in the association and the membership. So don't just take my word for it. You know, Monica, you, I, you just want to scroll through these. Um, these are some testimonials from members. Uh, Bob Martin and Thor, you know, he's happy with how we work together, you know, to, to draw folks into the industry. Um, as, you know, people were working from home and, and schooling from home and doing that in an RV. Um, uh, Toby O'Rourke, President and CEO of Campgrounds of America. Uh, you know, shares our, our commitment to, to have, making sure consumers have a positive RV experience. Don Clark, co-founder and CEO at Banner Design. RBI works with the dealers to help grow and reach and forge our relationships throughout the industry with the Go RV campaign. It's a great resource for attracting customers. Uh, RBI has been instrumental in supporting and bringing together suppliers, dealers, and manufacturers. So I think that, you know, that's, again, I think that's one of the things that gets overlooked is just the unity that we provide and, and the way that we, you know, dealers aren't our members, campgrounds are our members, uh, but we work collectively with them to make sure that the industry as a whole is strong. Uh, Mike Conway, the Southwire, says that we need the industry association, um, urges others to become members and be engaged. You know, he, he's one of the ones that came to the Cap, you know, Capitol Hill meetings during RVs Move America Week and the committee meetings. And, you know, just was really um, pleased with, with the experience he had there. Kathy Sutton, Tom Manning and Associates, she's an aftermarket member. Uh, RVA has made huge strides from where it was to where it is today. The webinars and virtual education are making sure we're demonstrating the benefits of why companies need to be a part of the association, why they should be a part of it tomorrow. Uh, very pleased and passionate about where we're headed as an industry. And then Jen Young, co-founder of, uh, of Outdoorsy, the RV Industry Association community is a diligent one that delivers on promises to their members. They are cultivating positive experiences in the RV travel industry, which is our goal as well. All right, I feel like I need to take a, a big breath and a drink of water. So what questions do we have, Monica? All right, yeah, you, you take a water break. Um, so we've got a couple questions here. An easy one, can we email the recording? We are recording this and it's gonna go out in next week's newsletter. So all of you will receive it and you can send it to any of your uh, colleagues who were not able to join us today. Um, Bill, is the surge of RV sales due to COVID, um, mm -hmm. sustainable for the next few years, or is this a sugar high that will have to, that will turn down? I don't think it's a sugar high. I think that if you look at the 40 year trend of RV ownership, uh, sale, not RV ownership, wholesale shipments, you know, you've seen something that's been on a, a really gradual incline over 40 years, uh, there's peaks and valleys. I think that what COVID did was it accelerated the RV buying process for folks that had already had RV on the radar, while also folks that never thought they were going to be RVers all of a sudden were RVers. So, you know, that's the, that's the challenge to the industry is for those folks that are new that maybe had a longer runway to get in the industry or are very new to the industry, didn't expect to be there. How many of those do we keep? That's really, you know, what's going to accelerate that growth. And what we're finding, just like I said, I looked at the, um, the draft report on these new buyers is, you know, they're 
it looks like they're interested that they're going to stay, that they're going to keep the RV they have. They might even upgrade to a new RV. Are we going to lose some of them? Of course, we're going to lose some of them. We lose, you know, that's just the way it is. But I think that, you know, it's a really good basis and foundation to, to accelerate growth that we otherwise may not have had. Are there challenges we need to address with that? Yes. You know, that's one of some of the things RBI is working on. We need to, we need to provide one, you know, some of the things that they say impacts their decision is, can they get to a campground? Can they go where they want to go? You know, that's a long-term issue. We need to address the number of campgrounds, number of campsites that are available to those folks. They need to get their RVs fixed on time, right? They, that's one of you. So that's, that ties into RBTI where we're recruiting technicians, we're training them, you know, to make that repair experience as quick and as painless as possible. So now I don't think it's a sugar high. I think that it, it you know, it's going to help boost the industry you know, in the short term and the long term. One of the big, you know, really long term, one of the things that um, is an indicator of future RV is, did you camp as a child? And I think that over these past two and a half, three years with COVID, you've introduced a lot of children to camping and outdoor recreation. And, you know, they're going to remember that. And when they get to be parents, that's something they're going to look to recreate, which is what we've seen over the past 40 years, time and time again. I think one other thing to the, you know, due to COVID, what a number of our surveys have shown is that people are buying RVs for the same reason they've always bought RVs. Yeah. Um, it's the top reasons are love of road trips and traveling and comfort. Um, and researches on travel because of COVID is really at the bottom of those, those lists. So that's encouraging for the industry as well. Yep. Um, Another question, it, or I guess this is the follow-up to the one you were just saying. If, but Bill, if you could snap your fingers and assure one thing the industry should do better, what is that? I think to keep these people in the industry. Um, you know, that's a hard, you know, because people RV for different reasons. I think that yeah, this isn't, this isn't um, germane just to RV. People, you know, people don't want hassle. How can we make it as hassle free? They just want to get that RV and go have fun. So how do you help with that? And, you know, that, that's, a, that's a vertical, you know, channel um, issue that everybody has to solve. You know, OEMs need to make vehicles that are ready to go, ready to be enjoyed. Dealers need to do a good job of training those folks to use those vehicles. Go RV and help, you know. I think it's just how do we make it so that, you know, we limit the hassle that those folks face in terms of, using their RVs, finding places to camp, knowing how they're going to get it, um, you know, being comfortable and using the systems. Um, and, um, you know, if, it, if something does happen to get, get it repaired and back on the road as fast as we can. And, you know, I, the industry, we, are, we fully understand that and we have programs in place to help, help, uh, help do that. Um, it would be really help us as members have a staff directory on the website behind the login to be able mm -hmm. to connect with the right people. We have that, but we need to do a better job of showing you guys where it is because that actually does exist on, on the website. And so we can take a look at that and how we can make sure that um, is easier to we, find. We will do that. But again, my promise to you guys is if you contact me, Perdue, Monica, you know, we don't want you searching through website pages trying to find it. Just give me a call, give me an email. I'll get you, I'll get you in touch with the, with the person that needs to be in touch with. If I can't, sometimes I can answer, answer it myself, not often. Not you really can even often. just reply to the news and insights email yeah. that'll come back and, and our team will get you to the right place. So you don't have to look anywhere. Um, so that's the last of the questions that have come in. Do we have any other questions from, from the group? Or Bill, is there anything else that you have not shared? No, you know, I just, you know, I, I just think that, well, you know, the strength of the association is its members. And, you know, we have really great members. We have a lot of very committed, engaged members. We want to increase that. We want to provide the best value we can to you. Um, you know, your investment helps do all that we do. And I just that we're very appreciative and of the support you give us financially when you volunteer. And um, I, I just know that everybody in that building, everyone not the building because we work from home a lot now, but everybody at RVIA is committed to providing great customer service to you. They want your membership experience to be the best it can be. And, um, you know, 
So whatever we can do to help, whatever suggestions you, you have to what we can do better, programs that we need to add, you know, we'd, we'd love to talk to you, love to listen to you. All right. Well, thank you all for your time today. Thank you, Bill, for explaining all the benefits and resources and data available to members. And again, thank you all for your membership. Uh, there's recording and we will send it out next week. Any final thoughts, Bill? No, just again, thank you guys for your support. We, we appreciate it.